Okay, so this is a guide on how to remove the uh, LT1 engine from the bottom. It's very similar to LS1s as well, so this is about the uh, seventh time I've done this from the bottom, not from this car. But this will be the second time with this car. It uh, lost compression a couple of cylinders, so it's time to rebuild it. So anyway, I would put it on back wheels back here because when you lift the uh, car up, you're going to want to pivot on those wheels. They're a little more stable than jack stands probably for that part. Go ahead and rem if you're in a small garage, you might want to remove your hood for clearance. Take out your battery. You don't necessarily have to take out your radiator, but it's pretty easy to do and it gives more room. So I would take out the radiator and fans. If you uh, if you haven't done this before, I would suggest getting little getting baggies and marking them with things such as like strut tire and sway bar. Also mark the plugs if you don't know. So after that, there's a ground. There's a ground right here. Remove that ground. And you can remove this too. This is gonna these posts. Right, right here. Those are gonna go down with the K member. Remove it from the back of your alternator. That way it goes down. There's a. After you take your PCM out, there is a grommet down there. What? There's a grommet down there that you're going to have four plugs come out of. They unplug from underneath your car, or underneath your uh, passenger dash part. Take off this little kick panel right here, drop this down, and there's four plugs. This white one, blue one, and a black one, and then a small one up there. That is the uh, low pressure switch for the AC, I believe. And don't worry about those ones on the side right there. You'll just pull it through the grommet. And the reason for that is so you can drop the whole harness with the car, with the engine, instead of having to disconnect all the plugs. And then route, you're going to want to set it on top of your engine like that. There's a vacuum line you're going to want to disconnect. Be careful of that. If you haven't done this before, it's probably going to run beneath uh, this line right here, so you might have to drain your AC. I've already done this, so I had it route over, so I didn't have to do that. Here, your power string, you don't have to disconnect anything. This will come down with the engine. Just take the bolt out and the uh, push clip pin that holds it in, and then it'll just route it over here, and it'll drop with the engine. You won't lose any fluid. Uh, back over here, you're also going to need to take this part off right here. It plugs in where it screws into that. So I guess it deals with the air conditioning. If you got your hoses and everything out of the way, there's some parts you need to disconnect over here. Take your, uh, your cruise control cable off and your throttle cable off. You just push this back and pull the cable out. Make sure you unplug this hose from the, um, the fuel line, it comes out of the this plastic part right here, plugs into that. You're going to want to disconnect your fuel lines back there. The plastic the plastic tool is easier, but I had the, uh, all I have is a metal one. And then make sure you disconnect the brake booster from your brake booster right there. Because that comes down with the engine. You're going to disconnect your two front brake lines right here because they're going to come down with the engine as well. They are... Get the focus. Anyway, it says left front right there. And then right front right there. You're going to take those two off and then pull them out because those are attached to the K-member and then they come... There is a ground right here. Don't forget to take off. It's grounded right here. Make sure you take that off because that's 
connected the engine to the frame, so that's that would break. And put bolt. A good tip is to put bolts back in. There's a bolt that goes in that hole right there. You have to take that out. That is your for your steering column, I guess, to turn. And you're gonna need to get a nice breaker bar because it's locked tight in there pretty well. Now, when beneath the car, you're gonna want to take out your drive shaft, of course. There's just uh, there's four bolts. Four bolts right there. After you get to spin the, uh, you have to let the wheels in there and spin, take the e-brake off and spin it, and then unbolt them. Then get a screwdriver, put it behind the drive shaft, and just pull it out. Once it's out, you can pull it out of the transmission. For your torque arm, you're not going to need to completely disconnect it. You can leave it connected to the rear end. Just take out the bolts right here, and you can just push it up. Make sure it's out of the way. <coughs> For an automatic transmission, make sure you disconnect the... Um, Shifter cable, I guess is what it's called. Just it's connected two bolts right here. Unbolt those two bolts, pull it off, and pull unbolt. It's clenched right there. Just take that off, pull it off, set it to the side. If you have a standard, I believe all you need to do is just uh, disconnect the slave cylinder, and as well as you need to go up top and take your shifter off. If you have regular manifolds, um and you're upgrading long tubes you can go ahead and just cut your exhaust or your white pipe off I already have long tubes so just take your white pipe off from the exhaust once you have all that done um, I would go ahead and take your cross member off you know you have four bolts and the one that holds it in I have a poly so it has a different bolt and I'm done for the day right now, so support it. After you've got most of it done, there's going to be three bolts on each side. These hold the K-member right there. One, two, and three. That's how it is for both sides. You're not going to want to take those out right away because your K-member will fall down and you'll probably break something. After you get that out, you're going to want to take your shock tower two bolts out. There's two more over there. And then the two, these four ones. I would leave these in. And then I'm going to actually, whenever it's time to drop the engine, I'm going to have it on these, uh, these little like furniture dollies I'm gonna lower it down take the remaining cross member bolts out and then these which should be the only thing left holding the uh, engine into the car I forgot to mention on both sides there's these uh, wheel speed sensors you're gonna want to disconnect that because one side stays with the car one side goes down with the uh, the uh, K member. Okay, so quick overview battery, radiator, uh, grommet, four plugs, pull it out, route it over here, set on top of the engine, unplug, disconnect these right there, bring them down to the engine, disconnect this so it'll come down to the engine, disconnect this, set it aside, take out your two uh, front brake lines. This one right here, and this one right here. They are labeled uh, fuel lines back in the back, throttle cables, this uh, little vacuum line right there, your hood, drive shaft, torque arm, exhaust. Make sure you get those wheel speed sensors. You have to unplug the AC part right there. And um, the four K member bolts for the transmission, the six for the cradle, and then the four for this, and you should be able to drop it down. 
of course we're dropping it down make sure you watch for stuff that still might still be connected like in case you forget grounds like in case if you forget this ground right here What? That's fine. That's why I have on rear wheels. Something's leaking over here. That's fine. Okay. Leakage is fine. There it is. Say hi, Juicy. Hi.